Right, so as you can see, I've kind of started a background in this. And I hadn't intended to do that, but when I thought about the colour of the dog and all that red, I thought it really needs something. It needs all that green in. And I've tried to fiddle around with it and it, it really wasn't working for me. So I've made a start on it. And I just wanted to show you really how I'm going to carry on with this because at the moment it looks a bit of a mess. I don't want it to be all um, really sharp in the background. I want it to be blurred like it is in the photo but I don't want to go into such detail. I just want to get that effect. And um, I found it quite difficult to choose all these colors. There's so many colors in here that, um, you know, I just needed to really get it right so that the dog's hair color really contrasts beautifully. Um, so, yeah, so what I thought I'd do is I'd just show you how I've chosen the further pencils because um, it's not looking good. It, it, it needs to be just those colours. So I've got all my charcoal, uh, I've got all my pastels out and um, I've just sort of laid them all out here. This is kind of how I go about it, but this is a neat version. So I just choose the pencils that are in the colour in the picture draw them out on the paper towel. This is what I usually do, but it usually looks a total mess. Uh, but I thought I'd do it neatly for you so you can see that's my guide now. That's my guide for the colours. I've got these on standby at the side. And I've got a little kitten watching me. He's always there. So, yeah, there are a couple of turquoises in there. Lots of mostly cool greens but there is one warm color in there one or two warm colors so i've got those ready so we'll just see how we get on but i just wanted to show you this first so before i start doing it and um it's a very laborious process so i just want to show you a little bit really of how i'm gonna attempt to do this um so yeah you'll just see it there and you'll see it as i'm videoing it as I do the next bit. But I don't know if it'll be till the end of this because I think it'll just be too boring for you to watch, but I'll just show you the process. Okay, so we'll catch up with that later. Okay. Right, <clears throat> okay then. Let's tackle this, get it sorted out. Um, so, yeah, these backgrounds do take uh, quite a bit of time to do. I've done very few backgrounds like this. I tend just to focus on the animal and that's, that's usually enough for me. But this combination, I think we're just going to have to try and do it. And um, I think, like I say, it's going to be a bit of a long job. already spent an hour on it. Okay, let's... What we're going to start with, I don't know. So, like I said to you before, everything I do is a learning experience. And what I'm learning here doing this background is that it, it try not to blend it too much because otherwise the colours go all muddy like this. I try to use black because it's so dark on the green and that's worked out quite well. I'm kind of okay with that. But then I went over it with the green and it's gone muddy looking. No, it's just not what I'm after, really. Oh, you know, these, these are really intense colours here. Um, a bit of black in there almost. Very dark green and black. Uh, so what I've discovered is that the more, don't try and blend the colours too much. Just kind of tap them. And it softens them. You can soften the edges of them so that they'll soften into the colour next to them. Just with your finger actually that's enough but too much blending takes the color off and or mixes them and so i haven't used this blender at all i've only done all this with my fingers um so i'm going to try and do that now and what we should start with let's see um i think we're going to try we'll start here try and work up with this 
aqua idea, I think. So I've got my two, two pencils here. One's very light blue, one's an aqua colour. And it's kind of pretty good. Just use your pencil on the side. You can hear there's still loads of tooth left in this. So I'm never going to be able to get it exactly the same here. Um, you know, I've got, I've got other things to do with my life actually. I could spend months and months on this trying to get it the same, but what's the point? People are going to, I want people to be looking at the animal, not just take in the colour of the background. Their focus is going to be on the animal. When, if you think about what you look at, when you look at a, a picture like this, it's the overall impression and then you focus on the animal's face. So that's why I know that if we could just get this colour right, that's what I'm after really. Just trying to get the colours right. Um, that's a good bit of a blurred thing over there. Bit of a blurred bit here. Try and keep bored still, that'll help. But I really, really wanted to show you this because so often uh, you see these amazing pictures, you think, oh, that looks amazing. I'll never be able to do that. But you don't see what's gone into it. You don't see, this is how it is. This is how it is when you do the picture. You never know what's gonna happen with it. I don't anyway. But everything that you do this way, you learn from. And you know how to tackle the next one when something else comes up that you might want to do like this. You'll think, oh yeah, I'll, I'll do that with that. Because uh, that's what I did with the last one. And that's how you, that's how you learn. You're learning all the time. And um, that's what keeps it interesting. Well, for me anyway. If you want to do that kind of work, and always move on and always feel that you've improved, then you're going to need to do stuff like this and tackle hard things. You don't have to do this background, by the way. You could just do, pick out one of the colours or two of the colours, blend it all through, do a smooth background. But for me, because I've done this kind of thing before, not exactly this obviously, but uh, I know that there's a lot of work in it and I know, I thought well I'd just try and do that kind of idea but keep it simple. But for me, it's my picture, it wasn't working for me. I just thought I've got to do something more important with this. It's got to be really good um, and I want you to I want you to get the benefit of watching this because often you won't get it. You won't get that. Yeah, see that's that's a little bit wrong. It doesn't matter. That's okay. Often you won't get this kind of thing to watch. And this is what I, you know, when I was really, even now, what I like to see is where things go wrong and then someone is able to put them right because they've done it before. Now I've not done this one, this kind of thing before. I've never had to put anything like this right. But, you know, that, that's good. It's good for me. It's, it's teaching me and hopefully you'll be benefiting from it too. I hope so. I hope so. Because I know from, I'm a determined person. Once I set my mind on something, it will be right. I'll make it nice. I know I can make it nice. But it will take time. And I just wanted to get that across to you because that's why I'm not going to want to be showing you every detail of this. Because it could take it could take me hours. And I you know, if I was watching a video, I wouldn't want to watch hours of this. I just want to see the principle of how it's achieved. And then, if I ever fancied tackling anything like this, then I'd know where to start. Now you can see that the colour looks nice and strong now, and I want to keep it that way. 
but I want to blend it back. I don't want it taking over the picture. So we'll just go over with all the, the light blue colour for now. There's a kind of whitish colour in there, but nothing's really white in this background. It's lovely, it's the light. It's obviously the light. Nothing's really white. We've got a lot of lovely light spots. And this, this is how I would do it anyway. Somebody else could maybe tackle this in a much better way. But we always just have to find our own ways. There's a degree of that as well. You can watch videos and think, oh yeah, I'll do it like that. But then you might think, oh no, this works for me better actually. I think uh, I think this is better. I think this is going to make a better job. So it's it's uh, it's really anything you watch is is your guide. If you try and copy it exactly, it, it's not going to work. It's not gonna, that wouldn't work for anyone. I don't think. You know, it'd break your heart. You never get it. But you can look at the principles and you can think, oh yeah, I'll, I'll use that as a starting point. And go from there. We've got little kind of... See, my picture's going to end about here. So we just have to take that into consideration. That's where the picture's going to end. There. And it's going to come up to about here. So a little bit of something there. I am trying to get the colours in where I can see them on the picture because they're the they're important for the whole look of this. That's really like a white and limey green in there. I can't see much blue going on in there. I can see a bit here and I can see it here. That's, that's it, maybe a touch here. So we've got the blue colours in. This is how I would tackle it anyway, we'll just go like this. I'm just going to carry on for half an hour now and then when the half an hour comes to an end, if I get, get any more bits that I just think, oh, I really need to show you that because that'll help you, then I'll, I'll just do that. See, I'm always using the pencil on the side. Right, put the blue down now. Um, always using the pencil on the side. Now what I'm going to go for next is the limey colour here. So I've got a nice limey colour. That's quite... Where is it? Uh, yeah, this, this limey colour here. I've picked this one out for this. This is 232, it's a uh, Caran d'Ache, if you're interested. But I think for this, I would encourage you just to do your own thing with the background. There, I'll just put a nice bright colour in there. What I have noticed is you need to get these colours in, then just tap it with your finger. And then you've got a better chance. Just putting all those bits in there. See this I've had a bit of an experiment with this area here and it certainly hasn't worked. It, it's it's all right for there but not here. This needs to be limey. And this is a good thing about pastel matte paper. You can get these colours in really strong over what you've already done. Uh, you know it's got an immense amount of Although it looks like I've got a lot of pastel on here, I haven't really. I really haven't. I've just dabbed those colours on over what we had, what you saw. And that's a nice... Now these are all very strong, but when we've dabbed it with our finger and done a bit of blending over, you can also do things like this, you know, where you, you just bring the pastel over the colour, but you'd only tap that. You wouldn't try and blend it. You wouldn't go like that. You wouldn't help. 
for an hour at all. But when you've done something like this, you think, oh, yeah, that's a great, great sense of achievement. So it's up to you if you want to tackle it. If I were you, I'd just have a little experiment first. That's what I should have done, isn't it, really? But, uh, yeah, see, I just didn't plan to do this background. Otherwise, if I thought definitely, yes, I'll do that background. I knew that it would take a long time. Um, the reason I didn't do it is simply, as I've said, I just thought I could do it in a simpler way and get that effect. But it, it, it wasn't looking right. Even before I've got the red on, I knew, I knew from past experience that it wasn't going to work. Right, we've got a nice patch here. See, I've got a little bit of a browny patch here. Um, that's a couple of colours, actually. It's a nice bit there. It's just the most beautiful colours in this background. It really is. There's a little bit here. A little bit here. These are just splodges, really, aren't they? They're just splodges of colour. That's okay there, actually. Let's put that in there. Yeah. You can actually see the grain of the paper through what's underneath here. You can see that there's still a lot of tooth here that we can use. I can honestly tell you I've only ever ditched two pictures which were looking dodgy and I had a go at fixing them and it, it really wasn't happening. One was um, a portrait I did of Ken Dodd and my husband said to me oh yeah you know try try doing it in some mad colours <laughs> <laughs> poor old Ken looked as hot as anything by the time I finished with him poor thing I did a nice charcoal version of him and I was very happy with that but the colour thing on Ken skin tones are really difficult really really difficult takes an incredible skill um, to get you know that that facial color right very very much so uh, anyway I ditched that well it's upstairs in a drawer I couldn't bear to throw it out because it's a big picture and I spent a lot of time on it but I kept it the other one I did throw away because um, I didn't really like the, the subject, it was a cat, it was a big cat's face about this size and I didn't really like the subject enough, I didn't give it enough thought. I did tend to jump into things a bit really. Uh, I'm getting better at not doing that now because I know it can cause a lot of trouble. But, you know, we're on the learning curve here, aren't we? We're on the learning curve. That's quite good, actually. That's quite a good match there. Or I've done there. It's a bit bigger than here, obviously, but it's quite a good match colour-wise. I'm going to leave that. And that's going to be coming like that. That's going to be mounted like that. So that, that could have a bit more green in it I think but it's not bad it's not bad I'm going to put a little bit more aqua here where I can see it kind of it's a little bit here see look at that how it's gone straight over the top I'm just going to line it up a bit actually now that won't go muddy because it's the same sort of colour. So 
So that won't go muddy. It goes muddy when you've got colours from either warm or cool together and then you try and blend them. Uh, it will go muddy then. For sure. Okay, so we've got already it's looking better because no blending done, you see. This is where you've got to be careful. It's looking better to me already. Yes, harsh, yes, brash, but better at the moment. So now we're going to try and do the this greeny colour, because that's entirely wrong now. That needs to be darker and cooler. So we'll go for the the very dark green here. So this is um, a Faber Castell and it's 165. It's a very dark green. And it's quite a new pencil, as you can see, it's not even been sharpened yet. Just got it out of my nice set. So you can see how dark that is. I'm just going for this little spot here. It's really dark, isn't it? So if you hold your pencil like this, you'll, you'll be just dabbing on colour. A little dark spot there. And this is darker in here. Just blending that black through. Because that's okay, because it's so similar. It won't matter. Just blending with the pencil. Now it's a sharp edge, but I, I'm trying to keep away from sharp edges because I want it to, you know, you'll never get it like a photo looking like that. Well, you will, but it'll take time. You've got another colour in there. You've got the dark, then you've got a lighter, limey, uh, green, cool green. So you go from dark, I'll just show you, to cool, cool green. So we've got this, uh, one, this 172 Faber Castell, and then you've got that little bit there on the edge. You can just go over it like that. So you've got that transition there. See, it doesn't look like the photo, but it's kind of, and you can blend it through very, very gently. Hardly touching the paper there. That's it. I'm not going to go on my, there with my finger. And it's the same on here. You've got this kind of transition colour here on the edge of it. And then the other side. If you get your finger in the right position though, and it's clean, you can just go sweep up like that. Sweep across like that. Just, we'll try and do some here. gently sweep over it. Right, just tapping these really bright colours in because they are incredible. Needs to be a bit on the lighter side, but try and get some of this dark green in there first. Just get over back there, it was underneath. Now, this is a stick. I'm going to try and use a bit of this stick. This is one of the, um, oh, what is it? Anyway, it's a little stick. I, I think it's um, uh, you know, one of these Faber-Gastel. It's like a half stick set they do. It's great color actually. And it's 
not entirely right for this spot, but it's such a great colour. Try not to get it on lime green too much, but if you just smooth it over the edge, that will just blend it in a bit. And then we've got the um, Equary colour there. on each finger like your tool these are your tools just remember which color you've got on which fingers that's the trick okay that's looking much much better to me now, much better, much better. We'll get the light aqua colour up here a bit. Try and get this. That's quite a nice little light spot, isn't there? So we'll put the white over this. start off with this colour because it's nice and light and aqua. And we've got the... I think what I'm going to do, because I'm jumping around a bit here, not normally do, it's going to be easier for you to follow if I just keep to one colour and do it all the way over. So we've got, you know, we've got our bearings a bit better there. You can just... So I'm going to stick with this light, this light colour here, because I can see another bit here. It almost matches in with this bit here. That's going up. bits up here already. that we've got a nice light spot here which has been lost a bit there just get that in roughly shape of it and we'll go over that with a bit of green I think just there and then there's another spot there so we just work through it like this Also, you need to step back quite a bit and look at it from a distance, so step right back. Um, so yeah, I'm a few feet back now and I can really, really get a feel for it. Although it looks a bit brash at the moment, I'm much happier with that because it's a lot lighter and brighter. Whereas before it was looking muddy and dirty. Uh, because because of my inexperience, really, to be honest. I haven't done much of this at all. I really haven't. Um, but it's a good learning curve, and I'm glad that I'm doing it on video, really, because it makes me very conscious and really get it clear in my head what I'm actually doing, so that if I ever do this again, I, I know I, it gives me... It's, cementing it in it's a better it's a, it's a good way of learning yeah 
Okay. Now, what, I, what colour should we go for next? How long have we been on? Let me just check to see how long we've been on. Yeah, we've done nearly half an hour already. That's how long this takes. So really what I would do now is I'm just going to end soon. I'm just going to I'll go over these bits I've put in. Once I've got all my colours on, I might put more colours in down here before I do this. But that's the principle, that's what I'd be doing now, is with clean fingers, the right fingers for the right colours. I'm just wiping my fingers on my paper towel here actually. This is my windowsill that I used to put my pencils on. <laughs> Very handy. Um, so yeah, so this is what I would do. So I, I, I can see this sort of wisp of blue over there, which I'll leave. So, but this is what I would do. I'll just sort of go around these rather than all over them and blend in with the colour next to them. But that's what you're doing by doing that. You're blending in with the colour next to them. And then if anything's a bit too on the bright side, you can kind of go over it with a limey colour. I've got a, a limey colour here, but it's actually quite a hard stick, this one. This is a Conte de Paris. Um, you could, but you can use it like this, just to put lines, just to brighten up different areas. It's a great colour, isn't it? Just maybe over the black. Just going over the black, you see, gives it a nice, uh, we'll put it a bit in here just to brighten that area up a bit. They're very hard but extremely lovely. Just very gently there and then dab it over with your finger like that. And there's a lighter bit here. Just lighter bits in this bit here. It's probably the wrong finger there but just I've told you what you need to know anyway. So, you know, I'm, you know, I don't do everything perfect. I'm just trying to, to give you the best advice really so that it helps save your time. I think this needs to be up here a bit, this lightness. Yes, there's a light bit in there. Just that, that's enough. See how that's gone over there and made it all cloudy looking. Now, if you do that, <coughs> you have to go in and put it back again. So try not to do that. Just try not to do that. That was the very dark green, that one. So, Anyway, that's, that's the principle of it. That's what I'm going to carry on doing. And then I'll give you the update. But I'm just going around the ed these edges. See how it just softens it all up? And then you've got a bit of a blurry mass there. You could just go over that. It does give it a nice sort of soft look. And I think I'll, I'll think of a title for this video that to really point people in the right direction that it's going to be a how to put this background right, how to really make it all right again. Because I think that's what people that's what people do tend to try and find on YouTube. I certainly have in the past. Okay then. So. <laughs> 
as I've said to you many times already, I do like a challenge and this sure is a challenge. But there we are. Let's see how it turns out. Okay, bye for now. Look forward to the next instalment. I'll have to try and make it good because you'll all be watching. Okay, okay, bye for now.